Hello, we are going to take a look at this Capture app from Presonus. Here's the opening screen. You can see I have one session right now. I also can see down the bottom left that I'm working with the audio interface, the Sonic port. It's very easy to check that out and find that. I'm going to open a new session by hitting the plus button. And now you can see I've got my two tracks. Again, it's easy to see that I'm working with the Sonic port. Easy to find which interface. If I had different ones hooked up, I could switch between them. If I hit the little button up there that's blue now, I can open the tray, and you can see the single dot underneath the slider says that means that I'm doing a mono track. Now it's a stereo track because I tapped it. And then you can see over on the left again that now the sonic part is a 1 plus 2, indicating that we're doing stereo. Let's get a little bit of signal going in there. You can see I just turned on the monitor button. Now, the slider does not control the input for the volume there. You can see the input meter is still reading the same. So you have to be aware of that. You have to control the input volume on the source itself. Okay, we get that going. Take and turn off the record button on the other track. Let's record a little bit. up and jump over to the end of this. If you're really dying to hear the rest of that track, email me. I'll show you where to find it on SoundCloud. All right, now we've got that faded out, which I did on my controller. We've got to trim the ends and the beginnings of this. It's really easy. You can just tap at the end of that audio waveform and drag to your left and now you've got the excess cut out then we hit the rewind button go back to the beginning do the same thing at the beginning i want to get a little bit more precise here so we'll zoom in using the normal ios zoom pinch and zoom and again click at the left of that drag it over you can even zoom way in to get right to where we want to get then we'll zoom out and drag that audio file over to the start of the track and see what we got when we hit play. Yeah, so there we go. Really easy to do that. Some other things up here tell you how much time you have to left to record. If you hit the question mark, there's some online help right here that you can find some answers to some of your questions about what's going on in here. Now, we need to uh, get this audio out of the app. And if you sh hit the uh, share button, you can see that we can wirelessly transfer this to Studio One, which was actually a free version online. There is another way to do this. You can hook it up to iTunes, and I'll show you that later. Just title our project. Okay. Down in the bottom right hand corner there's some other options that controls how the metronome works. You can just turn the metronome on. You can set it to give you a roll, pre-roll of eight counts of the tape, or just the count off and then start recording dead. Time signature and tempo controls. Then you can also set a looping point. If you drag at the top of the timeline there, you can set the loop. Turn the loop function on in the blue arrow down there in the bottom. Transport and the transport bar. And then your audio will loop between those two set, set points. Okay, there's some other options here. If you double tap on the audio waveform that you get, a little menu to cut, copy, delete, duplicate, and split a cursor. For instance, if you wanted to get rid of the little introduction. You could listen to the intro, figure out where the intro stops, and then 
can split that track. Double tap, split it cursor, and now we have two waveforms. And we can get rid of that first part and just delete it. Now, of course, since this is the beginning, we don't really need to do the split and delete. We can just drag the front part of the file. But if this is the middle of the file, then we could do that. Now we can drag that audio over to the very beginning. And instead of having an introduction, now we just have the song starting at the beginning. And of course, that's better. The split functions more like if you have something you want to get rid of something in the middle that was bad, bad chunk of recording. Okay, let's take a look at how to get those recordings off from our iPad. If our iTunes and iPad are set up to wirelessly sync over Wi-Fi, we would not not even have to actually hook a cable up to do this. What we'd go into iTunes underneath apps, go down to the file sharing section and find our capture app. And then on the right hand side there you can see there's my session. I just click save to. Don't forget to save it to an appropriate spot that you're going to remember later. And I'm just going to save it to my desktop. And then that those files will start to transfer. Now these files, depending on how big of a recording you've got, and can be pretty big. So you may want to just hook the cable up and speed the process up just a little bit. You can see that one was just not, definitely not done yet. That's why it's kind of grayed out. And there's one, when, we, when this gets all done, there's going to be a couple folders in here. Fast forward a little while, and you'll see a couple different folders. One of them containing your audio files, and then another file that is actually the capture file that would talk to Studio One. One last thing I think bears mentioning is you have to watch in this opening screen. There's a recent sessions and in all sessions. Make sure that you're deleting your projects when you're all done from the all sessions tab because otherwise they're not actually gone. They are still there. Hope you enjoyed it. Good luck. Good recording.